Uh, did you guys enjoy a uh, little bit of jiggly drone, drone footage? So I got a, uh, a little drone for Christmas this year. My sister-in-law got it for me. Nothing anything fancy, nothing big. Um, got a little camera that I can hook to the phone. Real easy to fly though, but it doesn't like wind or anything like that. We had a really, it's kind of a, kind of a shitty weather day today. It's actually getting better now. But, uh, so I thought I'd try it out. I didn't get you much of a shot, but I thought maybe you'd find it kind of goofy, enjoyable. That, uh, uh, what the hell am I trying to say? thought you guys might like just to, to see the little bit of failure there, but, um, wasn't too bad. It was kind of fun to do, so we'll get some practice with it, try to get better. But, anyway, so I want to get a scarf joint cut, and I really want to use this slick. I really want to use it badly. So, I've got to take quite a bit off of this, and I'll tell you why. Now, this isn't a proper straight edge to use, but it'll give me an idea here. If I look at the back of that, and I know you can't see it from there, but I've got a good 3 16 of an inch there where somebody put a back bevel on it, on the underside, and I can't have that. That's why I haven't used it yet. So, what I need to do is I have to remove quite a bit of material from this to get this where it needs to be. So I definitely don't want to take this to a regular grinder because that will destroy the temper on this edge. Um, you guys have these tools, don't take them to a grinder. They, uh, you take the temper out of that edge and you will not be happy with it. So I've got this cheap ass harbor hazard, fraught, whatever you want to call it, grinder here. It's a wet wheel on one side and it's a, uh, no, it's got a regular grinding stone on the other, on the other side. So the wet wheel turns quite a bit slower. There's a gearbox on it. Somebody told me you can find these in Northern Tool also. I haven't looked. Uh, if I find it, I'll throw a link to it somewhere. But um, I tell you what, this was a $60 grinder. Dirt cheap. I mean, you're talking Chineseiest of the Chinese. But uh, it works really well for what I need it for. There's no shame in using a tool that works well for you. But some things we're going to have to keep in mind. I'm really going to have to pay attention to this angle on here. Get this, make sure I keep that right. And i got to get this flat. This cutting edge needs to be perfectly even with this. Because otherwise, I mean, I can move that around and I'm not going to cut anything with it. So... We want to get that out of here, but to do that I've got to remove quite a bit of material. So I'm going to turn this on, we're going to see how this goes, and uh, well, we'll just see what develops. So I don't want to hit this backside at all, I just want to hit here. But I kind of like to do a uh, kind of a test run here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work it like this. So we'll get it like that. Let's see if I can get this centered on the camera a little better for you. Back to using the wife's camera. It, it does a better video than the iPhone, but uh, the battery doesn't last very well in this weather. So I've been using the iPhone for everything. But so we'll get this guy back here. We'll take this off. It's going to take it's going to take a few minutes. Uh, let's see what we get. I may put a pencil line on here. Just to see where I have to go with it. And there I go over explaining. Okay. <clears throat> so it's beautiful out tonight. It's snowing really good, but we've got just enough cover in here now to make it nice. So I'm just gonna go with a just a pencil line here, just to kind of keep myself where I have to be. And I want to try to keep the same. I want to keep this. I want to keep this profile the same as what was on there. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Keep it nice and even. We don't need to take. Now we've got quite a bit to remove there to get it back where it needs to be. So anyway, let's see what happens here.
So I took quite a bit off of that whetstone and now I'm going to clean it up with I still got quite a bit more to grind off but I didn't want the uh, bevel to get so far away from me. It's the only problem with using something like that. A, uh, a big belt grinder would work really nice but I kind of achieved what I wanted to with that. I got this bevel evened out. And I'm almost down to where I have to be to get that flat on the back side. I like about sharpening something like this, that bevel is so big on there, I can clamp it down on a sturdy work surface and just kind of, it, it's really nice to get that like that. Um, that whetstone really kind of brought, brought that bevel back quite a bit to where I needed it. And now I've got to work on getting it uniform. But it's getting there. Now having these sides curved right there, that makes it act more like a surface planer. That's what's really nice about it. That way we can we're not leaving a bunch of lines on the side of it. That's what's uh, kind of a nice feature for using the hand surface planer. I bet you some of you are sitting at home right now wondering what the hell is he doing to that slick. Don't you worry, by the time we're done, I'll be able to shave the hair off a frog's ass with it. Hey, we're getting there. I'm starting to flatten out nice. Let's see what we got. Not quite there yet though. So when I go to sharpen this on the bottom side like that, yeah, really I should be tipping it up, but when I go to do that I should be removing the burr off of this back side. If that's good and flat that's what you'll do, but I'm not there yet. It's not quite, it's just not quite there yet. Oh I cannot wait to use this thing. I didn't want to cut another scarf joint without it because I figured it would just be make my life a lot easier and yes I know I'm doing that on the timber but I'm doing it mostly on the waste wood well, let's see if this thing passes muster Oh, it's going to be hard to see there. Oh, I'd say it passes muster, folks. I could shave with it. So I call that good enough. For now, anyway, as we keep working with that, it'll uh, we'll keep getting that edge a little better. So we're going to hit the two-inch chisel now because these are going to be the two we're going to use tonight, hopefully. We're going to try to get this scarf knocked out of here and uh, see what develops from there. I might as well hit this one too. Get our two inch done. Then we can start running some tools. Kind of a what the hell video tonight, isn't it guys? I wanted to get one out for this morning, this being Saturday. But I fell asleep on the couch last night. Oh, about 7.30, and I woke up at about 5.30 this morning. 
Talk about loyalty in my house. Don't even wake me up to go to bed. First, can't blame him. Can't blame the wife. Probably didn't want to get attacked in the middle of the night. Probably doesn't want more babies. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. So, have we said about this before? Just nice, easy motions. Doesn't take a heck of a lot. You don't have to push down hard on it. Just make sure that socket's back against there. And if you've been with us for a while, you've probably seen this a few times in some of the older videos. But this is, like I said before a couple videos ago, this is the simplest method I've ever found to sharpen a chisel. I mean, ever. It just brings it right back to where it's got to be. It's, it just works really nice. Well, nice as you can see. You can really line that bevel up really nice on there. It doesn't take a lot. Take the burr off the back. And make sure you keep that chisel flat on that stone when you do this. If you tip it up, you're going to get a micro bevel on the back of it. And she's not going to cut the way you want it to. I wonder why my car hearts are about destroyed. Now let's see if it'll pass the test. I'm going to run out of hair on my arms. I'll have to start shaving my ass, but I can't do that on camera. Apparently it's indecent or something. Oh yeah, there we go. Not too bad. We'll give her a little bit more. Probably not the safest test in the world either, but it's the one I use. Now, I like this Norton stone. I know there's a lot better out there, but this is really the best I have, so you make do of what you have. I'd love to get my hands on a set of the Japanese water stones, but you know, to be honest with you, this works just fine. And these are relatively cheap stones. I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not super expensive either. And it does what I need it to do absolutely perfectly. doesn't give you quite a mirror polish on it. Uh, some people really they kind of get off on that. I, I mean it's nice looking but I don't see where the edge lasts much better. I mean obviously obviously you're bringing things to a finer point when that edge is polished but if you don't have the angle right and you don't get that burr off the back you're kind of spinning your wheels, you know. It's always nice to work with a fresh, clean edge, too. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. I do. I'll run my thumbnail across that back side and I'll run it across the front and if I feel no burr there you know you got it pretty good so it gives it a nice uniform edge it's a nice square edge oh that's nice now we'll try the other arm running out of hair on that one Oh, 
well she passes. She passes quite well. We'll take it. We will take it. Wicked cluster of knots right here. Another little one right there. Kind of sucks. They are hard to work around, but that's why you need your chisels really sharp. You hit those knots and they're hard enough. They, they do a number on your chisels. Fortunately, this is pine. It's not like it's oak, but it's enough. Now, read through the comments over the last year. The question I've had a couple times, not a ton, but a couple times is, why do I use my chisel like this all the time? Why don't I just go in and pound it that way? Now, I've mentioned it a couple times, I've explained it a couple times, but when you go in that way, as you're pounding in, that thing wants to dive in. That acts like a wedge, it just drives it right in deep. And when I do it like this, it has a tendency to lift up. And you'll see, so this side's a little lower than this side because I've been chiseling from this way, just like that, so it skates up does that a lot around the knots. big reason I started doing that, you get around this heartwood and we're right, I mean that's the heartwood right there. You get around this and it has a tendency when you're chiseling this out, it'll want to tear it out. So that's kind of a pain in the ass to deal with because you'll spend so much time trying to get a really nice joint done and it'll tear it right out. Now, easiest way to cut this scarf is definitely on the bandsaw or on the sawmill, but not everybody at home has a sawmill, and I understand that, so I kind of like to show how you're doing it the hard way. I mean, uh, you could do it with a hand saw, a good ripping saw would make it a lot easier, but uh, sometimes I find when I use a hand saw and I cut this big, I'll tend to wander a little bit. So that's operator error. I mean, there's people that use the hand saws, nothing but for stuff like this, and my hat's off to them. I just have not acquired that knack for bigger cuts. Smaller stuff I'm fine, but the bigger cuts is kind of a pain. But This knot cluster here was huge. It goes, it meets right there in the heartwood. And I've got one running this way, one running this way, and one going this way. So that's a nasty little spot right there. and Quite a bit of chisel work left to do on that. Other than that, it's, it's not too bad. I have another one farther up towards the tenon, but nothing that, uh, nothing we can't deal with. But uh, let's see if we got you. Let's see if I can get you a shot of this actually, of what I'm talking about with the chisel. Move you around a bunch. Okay. So, hopefully, it's not too bright. So, I've got to cut, I've got to knock this off right here. So, I'm just going to start. So it's flush right here, but you get to this side and it's higher. And get you down a little bit more and then you can see it. And same thing right there. Even right there, you had a little bit of that heartwood tore out on top of that tent. See how that chisel kind of skates up? So it's going to do that, especially you get on a knot. And that skates up just a little bit right there. You gotta watch the uh, the grain pattern around the knots. 
it can be kind of hard to deal with those. Um, sometimes you're not quite sure how that sucker is going to tear out of there. So you kind of really you work a little bit care a little more carefully when you get around these knot clusters like this. They structurally they're not big enough and they don't go deep enough to where I have to worry about it on this on this framing member. But uh, look at that thing, isn't that gorgeous? Now, we've got our edge close enough to, or sharp enough to shave with, but you see, you see where the color's different on there. We're going to have some work to do for a while with the stone, but we've got that cutting edge where we want it. Let's see how she works. Now, nice thing about a, a slick, look at that. You can really get your, your body into it. And this is the first one I've ever owned, and I cannot thank the viewer enough. Because that is a hell of a lot easier. Wow, that's nice. And it leaves a really nice finish on there. And with these curved edges, I know it's probably hard for you to see at home, but with these curved edges, it doesn't leave you the lines next to it. You know, like you get, say, your... Oh yeah, just a really nice smooth. That is gorgeous. Boy, I like that. That I think is going to become my new favorite tool. See how it does on the knot here. So I still don't have this bevel where I want it. You see I'm lifting it up a little bit still. I don't want to have to do that. I want to be able to move that right smooth across there. Right flat. But we got it out for the most part. Which is what I want. Let's check it from the other side. That works. Look at the finish on that. That is nice. Well, you can get some really good leverage on it. Now I've got a little more work to do on the bevel. You can see where one side of it's kind of leading into the cut. It's going to be the side closest to you right now. It shaves across that knot pretty nicely. Not too bad. That, what a remarkable job that thing does. Wow. Should own one of those for the whole project. You know how much time that would have saved me? Just look at the shavings. Now I still have to cut this part of the tenon off of here. Which what I'll end up doing is I'll roll it over and do it. But uh, yeah, that's nice. That is super nice to use. Just a lot of control too, but you can really you can get your palm right into it. That does a nice job across those knots too. I like that. Of course it's not made for cutting and grain, but that is nice. Oh, that is a nice tool. Wow. Can't get over that. Ooh, a little. It's nice, it's wide enough I can really get in there with it. Very impressed how it does across that knot. Now obviously I'm going to go through and check this with a square afterwards, but that is a thing of beauty right there. That is really nice. It's 
Got a nice tight fitting tip protector on it too, which is really good. The ones I got from the uh, factory with these uh, Henry Taylor chisels are kind of loose on there. They kind of tend to slip off. I need to make new ones for them. So, I finish this off with a handsaw, I get a little ridge right there. And that little ridge needs to be shaved down because when you get a good sharp chisel, you should be able to slice right down end grain pretty decently. And you're not going to want to start across the knot right there. You're not going to want to start with something that's a quarter inch thick, but when you got a little shoulder right there, it works really nice. So, big thing that we have to check because this is going to determine how the next piece going into it fits. I want to make sure this guy's square to this face here, because this face right here should be square to the reference face. That's pretty good there. Not too shabby. Got a little work to do on this end. Now this is on the adjacent face. That is perfect all the way up. That's what I want. But this end right here we gotta shave that down just a little bit. That's not a big deal. We can deal with that. That's not too bad at all. Well, this one's getting a little bit on the long side, so I'll shut the camera down. And I'm going to finish this up. So you've seen a, you've seen quite a few of these joints cut now, but uh, yeah. So that's the slick. You gotta love it. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, that drone was uh, that was a fun little learning experience today. It just enough of a breeze where it took that thing and just whoom, <laughs> right into a damn tree. But uh, gonna gonna need a lot of practice with that thing to get it uh, oh to get the camera nice and steady on it. It's just a it's a little guy, you know what I mean. It's not a real expensive one, but uh, perfect for what I want. Um, I do have a brother-in-law with a nice one, or with a bigger one. I shouldn't say that one's a real nice one. Um, thank you, Shannon, if you watch this. I know she, uh, it's my sister-in-law. She watches these sometimes from time to time. But uh, I finally used it. I finally charged it up and finally used it. But um, anyway, we're just plugging away. Always plugging away. But uh, we have get we are getting dumped on the last few days of snow. You wouldn't believe the snow we've got in the last few days. This ground was bare a week ago. There wasn't anything here, and now we're just uh, we're good and buried. But that's all right. Believe it or not, it is a beautiful night to work on this out here. I've got enough of the siding on where we're fairly sheltered in here. The uh, the decking's pretty well all on up above. So I mean, we've got a bunch of snow in here from you know just snow blowing in and stuff like that but we're we're not too far we're really not too far from having this thing finished up um got still have plenty to do but nothing we're on the final stretch of it and that that feels really good because i'm i'm actually getting to a point now in this project where i'm really looking forward to having it done and being able to move on to some of the shop stuff i want to do get on to the next timber frame project things like that i can't wait to build the uh the coal forge in here. I just cannot wait to do that. I've, I've got a grocery list of tools um, I'm getting ready to make and I've got a bunch of 1080 steel. I've been getting it for free. It's the uh, it's the cutting edges on the uh, the highway department plows. It's all 1080 steel. It's about a half an inch thick. So I've got pieces from three inches wide to six inches wide. 
perfect for tool making. 1080 steel is nice because it's a good high carbon steel, but you could really hone it to a super, to a razor edge a lot easier than you can some of the other steels. And a lot of that is the carbon content's high, but it's not as good as, say, like an A2 steel or something like that. But it's really good for, for cutting edges and things like that. But uh, when I go to make some broad axes and whatnot, it'll uh, we'll be forge welding a bit into the axes, stuff like that. That'll be fun to do. So we we got a lot of good stuff waiting on this project to be finished. Um, my plan is going into the future is having kind of an all-purpose, old-fashioned shop where I'll be able to make anything I want to make, and hopefully get a business going. So. Even if it never turns into a full-time thing for me, maybe it'll be something the kids want to do when they get old enough. You know, I, the trades, it's so important to keep the trades alive, and traditional trades, they're fading away. You know, really, you got to really be glad that there's a place like YouTube out there where people like us can share things with each other, the knowledge, you know, and it's a fun way to make a little extra, you know, really, in all honesty, it is a really good way to make some extra money. It's finishing this off for me. It's not a lot every month, but it's enough to keep me moving somewhat. You know, uh, I've said it before, I ran out of money a long time ago, but this is keeping it alive. All the views, all the comments, you know, it all helps out. Um, I've had a couple people ask how they can support the channel uh, monetarily. And what I tell them, and I'll tell everybody, uh, we're good. We're, I'm happy with the views, stuff like that. I'm not going to ask any of you folks to send money or donate to Patreon or any of that stuff because uh, you guys work hard for your money just like I do, and I'm not going to sit here and play on your heartstrings and get you to send me a bunch of cash to finish a project up that I took on myself. So anyway, I'm rambling on quite a bit tonight. But I just enjoy talking to you guys, you know. So, anyway, thank you for watching. We'll, uh, we're going to keep plugging, hopefully. We're almost to mid-February here, so hopefully spring's not too far off. Probably, uh, around here spring is pretty well guaranteed towards the end of April, early May. We have had snow in May before, but it's a pretty rare thing. So, have a good evening. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.